Uh, well, thanks for having me. Uh, really excited to be here today. Um, it's been a pretty awesome conference so far. It's uh, been watching everything there. Pretty excited about all the Maui stuff, all the .NET 6 stuff. But uh, what we're going to be talking about here in this session uh, will be a little bit different, right? So um, unfortunately, it's not anything new or uh, uh, maybe totally as exciting as Maui and .NET 6, but uh, something that you might be able to apply to your code today. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know me, my name is Mike Stonis. I am a Xamarin architect out in Chicagoland. Uh, I have a company named 8Bot. Uh, I've built a controls library called Aurora Controls. Um, if you want to get a hold of me on Twitter, you could get to me at Michael Stonis or one of the links down below here. All right. Um, Who's ever been to this site? I don't, I don't know. Has anybody ever been to this site, Dribble, um, or a similar site to it? These are these design sites where people put all of this really cool, uh, intricate uh, design type stuff together for mobile applications. Um, really neat, um, you know. Really neat kind of setups here. Really kind of inventive stuff. Uh, to, to to say you know what their applications are going to look you know what they think mobile applications could look like um, you know how to build beautiful applications and things like that so let's take a look at an example of this um, and here you know at my company we we work with a lot of designers and they come up with designs that look beautiful just like this you know it's got all these really nice rounded edges there's transparency we've got like <laughs> All different kind of mixed fonts. There's animations. There's you know card views. All this kind of stuff. Um, to me, as an end user, this is wonderful. To me, as a developer, it's essentially kryptonite, right? It looks beautiful. Our designers love it. Our uh, you know product team loves it. Our clients love it. I have no idea how to do this. Right, it's it's pretty straightforward for somebody to go into something like uh, Illustrator or Photoshop or whatever it might be there and dream up all these huge designs. But as a developer, these are essentially kryptonite. Right, to me, to develop an application, what uh, I'm typically having it look like is something like this. Right, so when I started uh, kind of writing applications, .NET applications, forever ago uh, in good old uh, Windows Forms land. This is the type of UI that I was developing, right? It's got half a million buttons. The fonts are too small, uh, but I was happy with it, right? And it had it had a ton of functionality. We'd ship this to clients, and they would be, you know, happy with it, right? <laughs> it was kind of what you would get, uh, but because, uh, you know, at the time, applications weren't as nicely designed. Um, we weren't, uh, you know, as intimate with with uh, our devices as we are today on mobile. And so now as a mobile developer, it's it's not only that we have these sort of dreamt up designs that we would see on a site like Dribbble, we actually use applications that are beautiful, that are very well designed and function very nicely. And so, you know, I pulled up a couple of these ones, um, you know, as just examples, I'm not saying that I think any of these are amazing or anything or one way or the other, but they all look pretty nice, right? Um, and they all could be a little bit difficult as a developer to, to Build something to look exactly like this. Again, you know, this things like drop shadows, a lot of these rounded corners, custom animations, custom, you know, controls and things like that. That again, as a developer, I can't say I can't do this anymore. You know, um, the end users know it can be done. My product team knows it can be done. So what I have happen is my boss comes to me or my client comes to me. And I say, well, I, I don't know if I could really build this. You know, that's not really something that I think we could do. And they say, no, it needs to be done, right? It has to be done. And so what happens as a developer? You know, what, what are we to do in these circumstances to design these things? Um, a lot of the teams that I work with and, and a lot of the people that I work with, you know, are, are smaller teams. You know, they're, you know, five developers, maybe 10 developers or less. Um, some of them are new to mobile. And you, you, it's going to be difficult to compete with somebody like Apple or a, a big design firm to get this stuff done. But 
as we'll find out today, I think we've got um, some magic up our sleeves. So the first thing that you could attempt to do uh, to draw some of these controls or to build applications that have that nice design is to use the native APIs. So you know, out on iOS, we've got core graphics that's based on Quartz. On Android, we actually are going to use something that's uh, that we'll actually see here a little bit more, but they've got drawing APIs on Android. Uh, same thing on Windows or Tizen or any other platform that you're on. They kind of have native drawing APIs uh, that are available for us out there. The, the problem is, is that they are specific for that platform. And so if you're a Xamarin developer, you're going to multiple platforms, you need to be able to support you know, iOS and Android and Windows sort of right out of the box. And it's, it's not gonna be great for us to have to learn the coordinate system and iOS and how we draw shadows or how we draw squares and things like that in Android. Uh, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, in the Xamarin world, there's actually been some pretty good work out here to kind of um, bring these drawing libraries and make them more native to us as Xamarin developers. Um, the always excellent Frank Kruger, shout out to Frank um, for making everything and being incredible, uh, has a drawing library out there called ngGraphics. Uh, and graphics kind of takes those different native drawing APIs, gives us a, cons a consistent wrapper on top of them, uh, and allows us to sort of draw in our UI uh, in a common language across platforms. And so if you're just targeting Xamarin applications, if you're going against iOS and Android, for example, and graphics could be a great option for you to go do some of that drawing. Um, likewise, in Xamarin Forms 5 or in 4.8, we've got it as experimental features. Uh, we have the shapes and path features. And so if you've seen any of the examples that uh, Javier or David have put together uh, on the forms team, they've got some really neat, really compelling examples of what you could do uh, with that same kind of concept, you know, sort of a wrapper built around the native drawing on those platforms that we could use to do things like, um, you know, build nice looking login screens or build those curves and those uh, different types of drawing out there for our platforms. Now, these are pretty good, don't get me wrong, but again, they're very Xamarin focused. And also um, they're, uh, I'm gonna say, not to, to demean them or anything like that, they're a little bit basic, right? So they've, they've got good functionality. The functionality that they have is, is really great, um, but they offer sort of a limited tool set to us, right? And so maybe doing some of the more complex things that we want to achieve in our UI, that may just be a little bit more difficult on these platforms, but still great options. You could go to a control vendor and you could buy controls. I don't know of any, but there might be one out there called Aurora Controls. It's at auroracontrols.app. Use code MONKEYFEST to save 60% today. Uh, that you could just buy that and use that to uh, you know, plunk it into your application. And that's a good option too. Uh, you know, there's other companies like Telerik and Syncfusion and Grape City, like it. everybody probably knows a lot of those, uh, but they may not have all the controls that you need for your application, right? So you may have a very specific need. Uh, the designers come up with something that they just don't offer in one of those libraries. And so that is where we're going to go to our ace in the hole, Skia Sharp. If you're not familiar with Skia, you are familiar with Skia, right? Um, Skia is a 2D graphics library that's built for cross-platform. It's got a pretty simple API to work with, and it drives a bunch of the stuff that you use day in and day out. So under the hood of Chrome, Android, Firefox, and Flutter, they're using Skia to do all their drawing. This was kind of like a, one of these revelation things to me. You know, it was, uh, was kind of like when I learned that uh, SQLite was everywhere. It was like, oh, you know, it's you learn about it and you're like, oh, it's here and it's there and it's there. Uh, Ski is kind of that same way. It's this great open source cross-platform drawing library uh, provided by Google or owned by Google that allows us to target all these different platforms with one consistent, very well-featured set of APIs. Skia Sharp then is the wrapper for Skia. So just like we would have um, with Xamarin being a wrapper for the native platforms like iOS or Android, Skia Sharp's that same kind of idea. They go and grab the, the native SDK uh, for Skia, wrap it up in C Sharp, 
and make those uh, that SDK available to us. But not only that, um, the primary developer, uh, Matthew Leibowitz, who's done an excellent job on this project, uh, has also wrapped up those controls and made sort of UI-centric containers for Skia. Um, so we've got things like a native, uh, I'll say a Xamarin native view for uh, Xamarin Forms. We've got views for Xamarin iOS and Android. We could use this on the desktop, WebAssembly, uh, Linux. Uh, it's it's all over the place, right? We kind of have the ability to use this on really, um, I think just about any platform that we would be targeting for .NET, which is really cool. Uh, there's also things like built-in touch support and interactions. So it's kind of everything that you would need to be a building block out there for building your own custom controls. Uh, in addition to just being the wrapper around Skia, uh, Skia Sharp also has other plugins for doing cool things like uh, reading in SVG files, uh, doing some additional font handling and manipulation, um, doing icon fonts, uh, all kinds of cool stuff along those lines. And we'll take a look at a few examples there as well. But what we're gonna do today is we are going to build the UI for the thing that I get asked about basically once a week. Ever, ever since the Apple Watch has come out, uh, every time we work on a new project or with a new client, I'm pretty sure they say, I want this little circular gauge control. Everybody loves it. Um, I, I don't have an Apple Watch. I love this thing. I don't know, it's it's very simple. It communicates its purpose pretty easily. Um, it it kind of makes sense, right? And so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna learn a little bit about Skia Sharp, and we're gonna see if we can build a control that is uh, pretty representative of what we see out here, all right? So to do that, uh, we're gonna start off just by using a Xamarin Forms application. And I've already got one built. Um, we're gonna kind of come back to that. I've got a little bit of stuff kind of set up in there and whatnot. Um, and I'll make sure that I get this code all available after uh, the presentation today. So you can go take a look at it if you want. But just imagine we've started a, a new or a newish Forms application, or if we've got our existing Forms application. And first, uh, the next thing that we'll need to do is to add in Skia Sharp. Right, and it's packages, NuGet packages, just like everything else. So just jump out there. And you're gonna wanna add in, um, if you're doing forms, you're gonna wanna add in Skia Sharp Views Forms. All right, and that's gonna give us all of that wrapper, all of that setup so that we've got uh, kind of the basis to go draw and set up our control in our forms application. Once we add that NuGet package in, it's gonna introduce a whole new set of, you know, uh, Skia-based controls for us. And we're really gonna focus in on three things here today. Um, Skia's, you know, pretty extensive uh, set of, uh, a pretty extensive SDK. There's a lot to go into, a lot of rabbit holes to go on. Uh, we're not gonna get into everything today. Just kind of wanna give you a, a good overview and kind of get you set up for success. But uh, one of the, the key things that you'll have if you're looking to make a view out here for uh, Xamarin Forms, for example, is this object called the SK Canvas view. So the SK Canvas view is a view that we could drop into our user interface. So if we're doing XAML or C Sharp, whatever it is, add this SK Canvas view. Uh, and what that's gonna do for us is it's gonna provide us kind of a, a few things to start drawing. The first thing that it will give us is a surface. So the surface is kind of the raw surface area that we are going to work with. Uh, it'll give us, it's gonna host a canvas that I'll talk about in a moment, but it will also give us some more information about um, kind of the size of the canvas. Uh, if we're hosted on a platform, it may tell us, you know, um, some information about the screen that it's being displayed on um, or some other things about how colors are being represented on the device and things like that. Uh, inside that surface then as well is a canvas. And that canvas is basically where we're going to apply any drawing that we want to do. So whether it is um, you know, drawing a line, whether it's putting an image onto the canvas, uh, anything like that, you, know, you could basically think of it like a painting canvas. So if you've ever painted before, if you've ever doodled on a piece of paper before, think of this canvas view as just kind of that raw, you know, untouched surface out there uh, to be worked with. 
The setup for it in code looks a little bit like this. So uh, we're gonna look at this from a code perspective to, to create our own custom control. You'll see that we just inherit a, a control here from SK Canvas view. In our case, we're gonna make this sort of circular progress view is, is what I've named it. Um, and whenever we want uh, to interact with this uh, view, or whenever we want it to get it to uh, attempt to paint or, or get it to refresh, uh, we're gonna reach out to our view and we're gonna make this call to it called invalidate surface. So invalidate surface is going to say, hey, you know, something has happened externally or we've received a notification that we just wanna go and make an attempt at painting on this canvas. Whenever invalidate surface is called then, we're gonna have this method that we must override inside of our canvas view that's called on paint surface. On paint surface is going to give us uh, essentially um, an event, or it's gonna give us, excuse me, an argument uh, that we're gonna get in that will supply us that canvas and the surface that I talked about there just a minute ago. And we'll take a look at this in just a moment. So this will give us sort of the setup for everything that we need to go do our work. In realistically, most of the work that we'll do for this canvas view is going to be performed in on paint surface. All right, uh, one real quick note though, before we, we go on uh, and kind of look at some more stuff here. Uh, SK Canvas View is a software-based renderer, which means uh, whenever we're operating with it, it's going to be doing that work on your primary CPU. We're not gonna be able to take advantage of any, uh, like the GPU that might be on your device or maybe any kind of acceleration that we might get from you know, um, like a, a coprocessor like that. If you know that you, uh, you wanna get some of that uh, additional GPU process power out of your, uh, your control, um, or if you wanna just kind of, um, you know that whatever you're doing might be very uh, GPU intensive, there is an alternative view that you could use to set up your control, and it will be this SKGL view. Now, SKGL view is gonna work basically the same and anything else that we see going forward here will essentially be the same between an SK Canvas view and an SKGL view, just with a few slight differences. First, you'll notice that it's, a, it's a, got a different base class. That's because this is going to be hosted in an OpenGL container. Meaning, you know, when we do our drawing operations and things like that, it can make use of the, um, of the graphics accelerator that comes along with your device. The other main difference that we'll have out here is that the arguments that come in are slightly different for our on paint surface. In reality, we're gonna get a surface out of it, we're going to get a canvas out of it, but there are just some slight differences uh, about some additional information or metadata that comes in with it because it's no longer hosted uh, in just a software-based canvas, it's, it's this OpenGL canvas. So just wanted to point that out. Um, which one is better for your control that you're building is hard to say. Um, you know, some controls, if they're, uh, you know, really CPU uh, intensive, you know, it, it may not make a difference whether you're using the GL view or, or the canvas view. Um, some views, if we're using some other features that come with Skia, may excel using that GL view. So uh, it's worth kind of mix and matching and playing around to see what works best, best for your situation. But like I said, they're, they're pretty similar. So let's take a look here at our application and let's start implementing some of these features into our uh, Xamarin application. All right. So uh, as I had mentioned out here, I've already had a forms project set up. Uh, it is, let me see, I'm not getting, there we go. Uh, I've already got a forms project set up here. Uh, I've already set up a circular progress view. It's the same kind of one that we saw in code here. And we're already at our paint surface method. So let's see what we could do out here. All right, uh, let's go get our canvas. So we'll say canvas equals e dot surface dot canvas. One of the other things that you'll see that comes in with this parameter is I can get info. So info equals e dot info. And info is gonna tell me uh, some information about the size of my canvas and things like that, right? So if I go into info here, you can see I have some information about like the height of my canvas, um, the width of it, you can get the overall size. 
Uh, some other information on here, like uh, what type of color space that we're in and things like that. By and large, for most of the work that you'll do out here, you probably just want you know the height and the width. That's what we'll really be using out here as well. Uh, but we'll, we'll leverage those in a little bit here to do some drawing. Once you have that canvas, then you need to do something with it. So if anybody here is a Bob Ross fan, you may know that whenever Bob's starting up a new painting, he almost always says, I've prepared my canvas with a specific color. I don't know if anybody knows what color that is. I'll, uh, I'll open it up here to the stage and see if anybody knows what the color is. Nothing yet, nothing yet. I'll answer it, it's fine. Maybe we don't have as many Bob Ross fans as I was hoping. He almost always opens up by drawing his, or uh, painting his canvas with this color called titanium white. Right, so we're gonna come out here. I'm gonna paint my canvas. I've actually got my application running over here on the left. You can see right now it's just a black screen. Let's run this again and just go take a look at our canvas out here with some titanium white on it. There we go. Beautiful. It's exactly what we want. Um, and so this is just kind of a start, right? just to kind of give you an idea. So we've got our canvas, which is where we're gonna do our work, uh, where we're gonna actually uh, do our drawing. And we've got some information about our canvas to know its size and things like that. Right, and I'll actually get rid of that draw color. We, we won't need that uh, here in a minute. But realistically, this is sort of just a starting point for us. Uh, what we would rather do uh, is it makes more sense for us to go through uh, and actually apply some kind of real painting to our UI. And so we do that here using this control called SK Paint. So just like in the real world, uh, if we want to paint, we have our canvas, we then need to go get our brush, right? And so SK Paint, in a way, is like our brush. It's, it's not quite all the way there, uh, but conceptually, you could think of it uh, as kind of the way that we're going to draw on the screen. So we could give it information about the color that we'd want to draw on the screen. Uh, we could tell it that when we draw on our canvas, I keep on saying screen, I should say canvas. When we draw on our canvas, uh, we're going to tell it whether we would like to draw a stroke, like a line, um, or if we'd want to fill the area that we're drawing in. Paint has really cool features inside of it. Um, if you've ever done anything with like shaders, so we could apply shaders to apply a gradient to our paint or to apply noise to our paint. Um, there's filters that we could apply to uh, blur as we paint and do things like that. In paint as well is where we're gonna do any work that we need to uh, set up for fonts or text rendering. So it's not actually where we set our text or anything like that, but it's where we would tell it the font to use or where we would tell it the font size um, that we're gonna use and, and how to draw it. Uh, on our canvas. Setting up a paint uh, inside of our control then looks a little something like this. So uh, you can see that I'm gonna create a new SK Paint object. Uh, it is a disposable object, so just make sure that you are a good .NET citizen and you clean up after that yourself here. In this case, I'm just using a using statement. Uh, but I'm going to create this paint object and then you'll notice I can apply some additional properties to it. Like I could tell it the style of paint that I'll do. Is it going to be a stroke paint or is it going to be a fill? If we are doing a stroke, what do we want the ends to look like? You know, do we want them to be squared off? Do we want them to be rounded over? What's the thickness of that stroke? If, um, if we're doing something like uh, drawing a diagonal line, uh, you may end up with sort of jaggies um, on it. I don't know what the technical term is. I, that's what I've always known them to be. So uh, you can apply something like uh, anti-aliasing to that line to kind of smooth it out so that uh, it's got a better presentation to it. All right, so let's go ahead again and let's apply that to our application here. So I'm gonna say using var paint equals a new SK paint. 
And I know that um, it's going to pull in a little bit of code here for myself. And I've got a couple of pre-built properties out here. You can ignore these for now. We'll come back. I'll explain all that in a moment. But just to save me a little bit of typing, why don't I just pull in some code here? Right. And uh, just like I was saying, you can see I've got my anti-aliasing. I'm going to draw a line. We're going to round off the uh, end of that, or I'm going to uh, do a stroke for where I paint. Um, I'm going to round off any edges that I may have out there. I'm going to give it a specific thickness. Uh, like I mentioned before on paint, we also have cool things that we could do, like set shaders. So I could say SK sh uh, shader. You can see I've got some of these built-in ones here. Like if I wanted to do a, a linear gradient or a radial gradient or you know sweep gradients, got a bunch of different uh, options in there to, to apply um, these shaders right out of the box. There's actually a whole Skia shader um, uh, language that you could use and, and bring shaders into your applications there. There's other effects that we could apply to our paint. So we'll say paint dot path effect if we're drawing a path and we could say, uh, let's just do path effect out here. So if you want to draw a path, like let's say you want to draw an outline for a box and you wanted it to have dashed lines on those box, uh, on the box, you could do that with a built-in effect. So it's pretty powerful, um, pretty full featured out here in terms of painting on our UI. we go. Great. So two of our core elements, we've got our canvas that we are going to paint on, our paint that we're going to paint with. Uh, and so how do we start to tie all this together? Uh, we're going to do that using SK canvas or uh, our canvas operations, right? So uh, this is where we're going to take any of the paint that we set up before and then apply some kind of painting operation. There's a lot of different built-in painting operations. We could do things like drawing squares, rounded rectangle, you know, rectangles, rounded rectangles. Uh, you could draw paths. So you could draw an outline or come up with an outline for an object and have it draw along that path. Uh, you could put bitmaps in. So if you have a pre-existing pit, uh, picture and let's say you wanted to blur that picture or you wanted to uh, make it um, uh, black and white or grayscale colored, uh, we could do some work out there to apply some bitmap, uh, to apply a bitmap to our canvas and, and make some modifications to it there. We could also do cool things with our canvas like transform it. Uh, so if you wanted to, if you think of it in the real world, if you wanted to kind of rotate your canvas or tilt it forward or tilt it backwards, uh, we have the ability to do that uh, using uh, built-in operators for our canvas. Uh, you could also do things which are kind of cool, like uh, save the state of our canvas and restore it. So uh, say, for example, you wanted to draw um, uh, a clock, like a wall clock, and you wanted to put numbers at all the different, uh, you know, 12 and 3 and 6 and 9. We could rotate our canvas, put the number, uh, put the number on there, and then continue to rotate it. And when we're all done, we could just restore it back to its original position. And all that math and all that work that's kind of difficult to be honest with you is sort of pre-done for us, which is which is great. Uh, a few of the kind canvas operations uh, uh, that you'll be using a lot of times, uh, probably the most common one that you'll use out here is to clear your canvas. So again, if we think of a canvas kind of like a real canvas, it's always um, uh, we're, uh, uh, it's always having paint applied to it. Or it's always having a drawing operation applied to it. So if we're doing something where we may modify what we have on the screen, we may uh, we don't want the old version of it on the screen out there, we would make a call to clear and it will essentially just wipe out anything that was on that canvas previously. And then I've got a few other options here for, for sort of drawing, right? So in this case, uh, if you wanted to draw an oval, you just call draw an oval, you give it the rectangle where you want it to draw. So you tell it, you know, where inside that canvas do you want this oval to draw? You give it a rectangle kind of to specify the top, the left, the right, and the bottom. And then you give it that paint object that we used before. So now it knows that it needs to draw an oval. And depending on the information that we supplied to our paint object, it may fill that oval. It may just draw a border on the outline of it. 
something like that. Skew, uh, we could use to uh, skew our canvas, right? So if we want to skew it, uh, we can we can use that operation there. We've got other operators like rotate, uh, like I mentioned before. Uh, and you can see down here, we've got the ability to uh, save and restore our canvas. And so this is that idea that I was kind of um, describing to you where you can rotate the canvas and then have it rotate back or uh, go back to where it was previously. So again, any of that difficult work or any of that difficult math realistically that we might have had to do to figure out, you know, all right, what's what's the value of pi or, you know, what, <laughs> what am I gonna be do, uh, rotating this by? You don't have to do that. A lot of that, that difficult work is kind of done for us, which is excellent. So let's combine the three of these together then and let's start to draw that little circular indicator for our application. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to use a path to draw um, a path to draw onto my UI. So I'm going to do a little bit of math here just to kind of figure out um, where I'm going to be at uh, in terms of my canvas. So you can see here I'm I'm kind of getting uh, the location for I want where I want to put um, my rectangle. So you can see I'm getting the left, the top, the right, and the bottom sort of defining this area that I want for my canvas there. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to add an arc to it, right? So uh, my arc is going to take in that rectangle. This is the rectangle uh, that I've basically just defined up here. And then I need to give it some other information for my arc out here. You can see I've got my start of my angle and then my sweep angle. So. In this case, we're just gonna start at zero and we're gonna go 360 degrees all the way around, okay? Uh, now that I have that path defined then, what I need to do next is I need to give my paint a color. So we'll say paint dot color. And I've already got a color property set up in here. So I'm gonna use, let me just get the name progress. One of the things you might know or notice here is that uh, I'm actually using this is a this progress color is a Xamarin Forms color object. And Skia Sharp has a lot of really cool built in transformers to get it into something that Skia can use. So in this case, I'm going to take a Xamarin Forms color and call to SK color to get it into something that Skia Sharp understands. I'm going to draw that on my screen here. And if we run this again, what I hopefully will get is perfect. A few arcs on my screen. So, um, I've already set up a user interface that we're looking at here. It's basically three nested views on top of each other in my UI. Uh, and I've got uh, my UI drawing out here three different times, like I mentioned, to do this radial progress. We can see it here. I actually have the XAML. Why don't I just open that up? You can see I've just got a regular Xamarin Forms grid here. And then I've added this circular progress control in there three different times. Right, so it's got some uh, different properties and things like that in there that we haven't looked at yet that we'll get to, but it's just like adding any other Xamarin Forms control, and that's that's really the powerful thing here. It's it's not uh, you know crazy complicated to get set up. You don't have to go and dig into like custom renderers and things like that. Um, if anybody's ever had to do a custom renderer, you know how uh, frustrating that could be. There's just not a ton of really difficult work that you need to do out there. It's kind of define your control. Once you've got it defined, kind of plop it into your user interface, and then we can start working with it. So here we've got a kind of a good starting point, but I don't know that I would say that this is fully complete yet, right? So let's see if we could, if we could do some more work here and pull in some more features. So let's see. Um, first, what I'll probably need to do is I'll want to make sure that I always clear out my drawing. So like I mentioned before, you know, if uh, I'm gonna be updating this canvas multiple times, maybe the first thing that I wanna do before I do any of these draw operations is just make sure that I clear out anything that was in there 
before. Uh, now I've got my arc out here and this is my primary color, but maybe I want to adjust it a little bit. So why don't I go and I'm just gonna grab some code that I wrote out here before. Um, and again, why don't I mix and match a little bit of some Xamarin Forms and some Skia. So I'm gonna use this progress color again. I'm gonna use this method that comes from Xamarin Forms color called add luminosity, and I'm gonna drop the luminosity a little bit. So let's darken that color. Let's see, what else can we do here? Let's draw a few other arcs. So let me go grab this here. There we go. Uh, and what I'm gonna do in this case then is, so I've drawn my first arc out there. I could have done it without an arc. I really could have, have done this with drawing a circle, so. It's fine either way, but uh, I'm gonna draw this arc on my screen. I'm then going to reset my path. So I'm gonna clear out any work that I'd done with that path before. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some properties that I've got set up in my control for my starting and my ending degree. So again, I won't draw a full 360 this time. Maybe I'll just draw a subset uh, of that circle. What I could do afterwards then is you'll notice that I could go and in, in modify that paint object. So with that paint object that I had set up before, I'm gonna reset the color now to black and I'm gonna apply an image filter. What this image filter is going to do is it's going to take the painting that I apply to the canvas and in this case, it's going to blur it. So it's gonna blur it uh, by the Sigma X and Sigma Y. Um, so I'm gonna apply kind of, you know, if you think of it like a shadow onto my UI. I can also do uh, some cool stuff here with blend modes. Um, I'm gonna give you some pointers at the end for where you could go research this a little bit more, but it's gonna use this concept called Porter Duff um, blend modes or the Porter Duff blend modes, I guess. Um, but what this will allow me to do is it's gonna say, only draw where you've drawn before. So in my case, what I wanna do is I wanna add a shadow onto kind of the bottom of the uh, that uh, ring that I've already drawn. And I could say, I only want you to draw it on drawing that I've done previously. So I could say uh, where I'm going on top uh, of uh, existing painting. Again, I'll make a call to draw a path here. And finally then, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clear out that image filter. I don't wanna blur anymore. Uh, and then I'm going to go and I'm gonna say, just do a regular draw. Source over is just kind of a regular draw from, from that perspective. And we're gonna draw that out here one more time. So let me compile this here. And let's rerun that here one more time and see what we get. Ah, far better, right? So that looks pretty close, maybe not 100% perfect, but pretty close to that dial that we had out there uh, from that Apple Watch. And you can see in terms of code complexity, it's really not too bad. You, you have to do a little bit of math. You have to do a little, maybe not even math, just a little bit of calculation, size calculation. And there's even some cool tricks and, and stuff you could do around here to simplify a lot of this. But in you know less than 50 lines of code, I was able to draw a couple arcs, draw some cool shadows on it. You can see I get this little uh, shadow effect sort of at the end of my arc here, um, and then be able to uh, draw that out on the screen. So pretty easy, pretty straightforward, pretty nice way to make our applications. Not only that, but the cross-platform. So the same code that I have here, I could bring it over to iOS, I could bring it over to UWP, and I'll get basically the same rendering out there on each one of those platforms, which I think is uh, pretty exciting. What's also pretty cool though, is that because this has a pretty deep uh, integration with the platforms, you know, we could bring it out to those platforms, like I mentioned before, like forms or native or desktop, uh, and just kind of have it up and ready to go but we can also integrate with those platforms uh, when we're creating our custom controls. So for example, if I'm uh, creating the circular progress control like we see here, what I can do is I could set up a bunch of bindable properties inside of my custom control. And what I'll do is I'll say, anytime one of those properties gets updated, 
just tell it to go invalidate the surface. So tell it to go repaint itself. And so with something like that, if we go back to our example code, uh, if I go back to my, my code here, you can see I've got a whole bunch of properties set up. Not super important what they're doing. Just, you know, if you've seen a Xamarin Forms uh, bindable property before, you know, they're going to allow us to work with these in our XAML pages or out on our UI. You can see that these are available to me all now in my XAML code. And I could also work with them in C Sharp. So in this case, uh, if, you know, looking at the code that we wrote for that circular progress, you could see I've supplied nothing in there to handle animation. There's not a loop that's listening for animation changes. I haven't supplied anything to go do and, so, and do anything cool in terms of animation. Literally just did go draw on this canvas and here's some Xamarin Forms properties. But Xamarin Forms comes with this pretty awesome animation engine inside of it. And we could leverage that to get uh, some pretty neat animations out of our controls with, again, very little work. So, right, didn't write anything for that control, but if I take a look at this code here, when I tap my screen, what I'm going to tell it to do is to update my uh, circular controls, and I'm gonna tell it to animate the starting and the ending degrees. And so if I tap on my screen out here, we can take a look, right? I get this really cool animation. Um, I've got different type of easings that are applied to it. I could change the length of time that it goes to run. Uh, you know, it, all this kind of cool stuff. Uh, I could have done work to change the colors on the fly. Um, whatever I really needed to do, and I'm just allowing Xamarin Forms to pump these property updates to my control, and my control can respond to it. Right, which I think is uh, is kind of neat out there. Um, let's do something else that's kind of neat. I guess uh, for anybody here that grew up in the 90s and watched stuff like Rocco's Modern Life or MTV or Beavis and Butthead, things like that, um, you'll notice that they had this kind of art style that was kind of jaggy and craggly and, and moved around kind of weird. Um, there's kind of like, a, like I mentioned before, we've got all these like neat built-in effects inside of um, uh, inside of Skia Sharp. So let's go ahead and let's make use of one of those effects. And I'm just gonna apply it here really quick, just to kind of show you how, uh, you know, one quick line of code that we can apply here. Uh, and with that one quick line of, uh, line of code change, we could drastically alter the way that that circular prog progress looks. So, um, if anybody's kind of, if anybody conceptually remember, uh, you know, remember remembers um, those kind of blinky animations, things like that, we could emulate something like that here. So it's a little bit like unnerving and, and weird to look at this, at least for myself. It is. <laughs> um, it just has this weird organic feel to it. But it's cool that we have a lot of these built-in effects uh, that we could just apply to our controls. Really wasn't all that difficult for me to add in. Again, it's just another one-liner out there to apply this uh, discrete effect, which will basically jitter our path. It's going to take our path and kind of jitter it along its line once we've defined it. Um, and then we could just draw on that. So I, I think this is a really neat way um, for us to uh, to make these controls and, and kind of get everything set up out there. So I think um, pretty cool, pretty interesting. And pretty easy, right? That's probably the most important part. Outside of just the uh, core Skia Sharp uh, controls, there are some other extended components that come along with it. Um, so for example, uh, there are a bunch of these Skia Sharp extended icon packages. So if you're looking to pull in any kind of icon font into your application and support icon fonts in your application, a ton of those are pre-built out there for you. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also pull in your own font library and do some work to make that available in Skia Sharp. Uh, there's pretty good support out there for SVG rendering. Uh, this is actually something that my company does a lot of. Um, if you hate uh, going through your applications and saying like, give it the HDPI version of this image and you know the MHDPI version of this image or something on Android or giving it your at 
you know, two X and three X versions of your controls uh, out there uh, for um, uh, iOS. Uh, you could use SVG icons, allow them to look at the runtime that they're on out there uh, and be able to uh, sort of render out at the appropriate size, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you need to do anything with text editing, uh, I'll quick shout out to this one. It's called Top 10 Rich Text. Um, this allows you to, uh, this uh, uh, library does a lot of pre-calculations for you for text. So if you need to do things like text wrapping or um, you know, multiple fonts within the same string makes it really easy to do, uh, you know, really good font, uh, font presentation without having to do a lot of custom calculations yourself. He's kind of done a lot of that work for you. Um, and then the last thing I'll, I'll say is that there are like a ton of NuGets out there that are actually doing UI control work using Skia Sharp. So again, just head out to your, you know, head out to NuGet.org, search up Skia Sharp, and you'll find a bunch of pre-built controls. Uh, that do a lot of this work out there for you. So really, uh, really pretty cool, really pretty interesting. If you want to learn more, I know we just kind of scratched the surface. You know, I just want to get you interested. Uh, there is a lot more, way more than I could fit in into an hour presentation. But the best place to learn Skia, not only just Skia Sharp, but Skia in general, is over on the doc site by Microsoft. This is the most complete place to find out Skia information. It's kind of incredible. Um, the docs team for Microsoft is always awesome. This is just another case of them being incredible. Um, not only that, not only do they have really great docs, which I'll pull up here really quick. And not only are their docs really great, so we could see that they've got things like, hey, how do I draw a simple circle? Similar to what we saw out here today. They kind of give you and walk through all the steps for you. What if I wanted to make a basic animation? Uh, and also if you wanted to get into, you know, a little bit more complex uh, topics, like what's a matrix transform? Um, you know, this was something for me. I hadn't done a lot of matrix math since college. So coming back and doing this when I first got started back in uh, Skia Sharp was, was a good refresher for me. Um, but not only do they give you that, but they also have uh, a really good, robust set of demo code that they've built. And so I've got that pulled up over here. Let me, I'll just pull this to the right. And so if you're looking to do like almost anything in Skia Sharp, this is what I would say is the de facto place to go and find it out. So if you wanna do uh, operations on bitmaps, say for example, you wanted to pixelate part of an image, I don't know what this monkey was up to, but he doesn't want you to know who he is, right? Um, you could go in and it's got all the code that you need to go uh, and pixelate an image and show you how to load a bitmap, modify the bitmap and present it out on that canvas view. Uh, really other cool things, let's see, I know there's a couple I just wanna pull out. Uh, let me grab the animated version. Let's see here, there we go. So here's a great, I don't know how well this will look on the stream. It might be a little bit difficult to see, but really great little animated spiral, uh, all done with, with like, you know, I think it's like 10 or 20 lines of code. It's, it's fairly straightforward uh, to get in there and do and just leverage that power uh, of Skia Sharp. So tons of great examples in here, you know, everything from just the basics uh, all the way up through doing like cool effects. Let's see, I'll just grab another one here. Um, where is... Let me grab my transforms. Cool effects, like they've got an animated 3D rotation. And so really all this is just drawing a um, uh, drawing some text on the screen and then using those matrix transformations to move the canvas around on the screen. So while it gives you this really awesome wow factor, it's a really neat animation, a relatively straightforward set of code uh, to get set up there. Uh, and get up and running uh, in your app. All right, so that's kind of Skia Sharp in a nutshell. I'd like to open it up for questions and answers, but to be honest with you, I felt a little weird this whole presentation. If you don't mind, I'll be, I'll be back in a second. Oh, I feel so much calmer now. I feel like I could draw some mountains and trees. Uh, this is the right, this is the right way to do this. So 
yeah, I hope everybody goes out there, draws some happy little skia controls. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions or comments, throw them my way. Uh, please let me know. Be glad to answer them however I could. Keep an eye out here. So let me go check. So I've got one question out here. Let me see. Um, the demo does not contain a touch effect. Is that right? That's correct. I, I'm actually just using a tap gesture recognizer. And uh, based on that, I'm having it uh, fire off um, that animation out there. So let me go see that code. So again, if we take a look at that XAML out here, I've got that gesture recognizer and it's just calling into tapped. So really don't have anything that I've done there. Uh, if you wanted to though, uh, let's see here. There is a method that you can override on touch. And so touch will give you the arguments about uh, what kind of touch occurred. So different than your regular touch recognizer, you could find out you know, the action type, you know, was this a uh, touchdown type of event? Was it a press? Was it a move? And so you could really build your own complex gestures and, and recognizers inside of here. So again, uh, Matthew has done such a great job uh, on this control and, and, and really opening it up so that you have a lot of functionality in here with a very easy to use, easy to implement SDK. I, I can't stress that enough. It's um, drawing I know can be very frightening to a lot of developers. Uh, but this is just a great, easy way to do uh, a lot of that work, right? The other information in here too, like you could get the uh, location, you know, X and Y and things like that. So you can find out where somebody touched if you want to do kind of a touch to draw type operation, things like that. It's, it's fairly straightforward to do. Mm -hmm.